All right, guys. Today we're talking about 5.8. Now, 5.8, we talk about scientific notation. And pretty much in a nutshell, what this definition is saying is um, you have really, really large things out there in the universe. Okay. Like, you know, distances, especially between maybe stars or galaxies. So the universe is a really, really massive place. Okay. Now that's thinking about things on the larger end. Also, you could work backwards and think about things on a really, really tiny end. So many of us have maybe seen the movie like Ant-Man. You guys know where things get insanely small, right? They just keep getting smaller and smaller in like one of those scenes. And so as a result, for our brains to kind of like wrap our head around these massive numbers with a bunch of zeros, or something that's super small with a crazy amount of zeros, what we have is instead what's called scientific notation, okay? And this essentially is where you're taking really, really massive numbers or really, really small numbers and making it where you kind of have this, this kind of standard scale where you can at least wrap your head better around these, these values because they're just so beyond our comprehension. Now, again, with scientific notation, this is pretty key. It's always going to be in between uh, greater than or equal to one, but then less than 10. Okay. So I would star that or box that. That's pretty huge because that's how we write scientific notation. It's got to be greater than or equal to one, but it has to be less than 10. And we're going to talk about why that's the case today. Um, some examples of what scientific notation looks like. So the factor, notice this number right here is greater than or equal to one, but less than 10, right? If you had to actually kind of put those numbers, um, put that number in between one and 10, you would see 8.3 is in between one, but it's less than 10 for sure, right? Now this times 10, we're going to talk about a little bit more why in a moment, um, has an exponent. Now, sometimes that exponent is positive and sometimes it's negative. Okay. For positive, this is where numbers get really, really big. And when it's negative, you can think of it as that's where it like shrinks down and gets really, really small. All right. Now, here are some examples of some scientific notation. 3.4, notice how that's between one and 10 times 10 to the sixth power. 2.1, well, that's in between one and 10 times 10 to the negative 11th. And then 5.43. So you don't just have to stop at the tenths place. You can keep going into like the hundredths or thousandths even and beyond uh, times 10 to the second power. So notice all of these numbers are between one and 10, right? And then after that, it's being multiplied by 10 every single time. And then after that, with that 10 has some exponent, whether it be a positive one or a negative one. Again, if, you're, if you have a positive, this is gonna indicate big stuff. But if you have a negative exponent, this is gonna become a small item. Okay. Now, this isn't just useful for math. This actually is used in some of your science classes that you'll experience in high school too, okay? So th there's some crossover that happens here that they'll, that they'll go over into more depth too. But scientific notation, just note, you have some number in between one and 10 times 10 raised to some exponent. That is the basic foundation for scientific notation. Now, some examples of what it would not look like. Imagine if you had 42.1 times 10 raised to the third power, let's just say. Well, the reason why that is not an example is because our value here is not in between one and 10, right? 42 is outside of that, okay? And so as a result, what we would have to do, and we're going to practice this today, is make it in between 1 and 10. 
Another example of what it would look like is if we had perhaps something like um, 0 0.34 times 10 raised to the fourth power. That is not an example of scientific notation. Why? Because our value here is not between 1 and 10. It has to be between 1 and 10. In a nutshell, guys, imagine you have some integer and then a decimal place, okay? Or maybe that integer is 3. You have to have some integer and then a decimal place, okay? Um, another quick example would be something like if we had 40,000. If you just had the number 40,000, I mean, that doesn't even have times 10, right? But the number 40,000, we call that actually standard form, and we'll dive a little bit more later on into that, but that is definitely not in scientific notation, okay? Like if you just gave the, the number 40,000, well, that's really all it is, is the number 40,000. There's nothing to do with scientific notation at all there. And so today we're going to practice how to convert things, though, into scientific notation. Okay. And the reason for that, why we care about scientific notation, again, it's, to use, it's used to better wrap our heads around these crazy large or crazy small numbers. And then from that, you can begin to compare different values. Okay. So, for example, NASA guys, they, they say, okay, what's the distance between this star and this star? They would convert to scientific notation. And then they might calculate the distance between a different star and a different star. Again, they would put it in scientific notation. And then they might be able to say, okay, well, which one's like a further distance? Now, the reason why that's impactful is because then you can do other things with that. Like you can find possibly you know, other planets that uh, maybe can be housing for life, let's say, okay? So a lot of times you're using these scientific notations to compare different things after you've converted. All right, next up, this is really key and this is really how we do um, scientific notation. Now, the absolute value of the exponent indicates how many places you're going to move the decimal place. So today we're gonna to be practicing moving the decimal place if you have a negative exponent then you're gonna be moving that thing to the left. This is gonna make things smaller, okay? Anytime you have a negative exponent again, imagine Ant-Man just getting really, really small, okay? Quantum realm style. Next up, if it is positive, then that is moving the decimal to the right. Okay, it's getting really, really big. Now, the number itself, when it's in scientific notation and when it's in standard form, those are exactly the same, okay? You're just changing it from scientific notation to standard form. And by standard form, again, standard form is just a number. Like, you were just given a number, all right? It's still the same number. It's just represented differently, that's all. All right, so let's see these in action. And by the way, the reason why you're always going to use scientific notation with this base 10, like why you're always going to see some number times 10 raised to some exponent. The reason why it's always times 10 like that is because we here, we use what's called the base 10 system. Okay. You guys have pretty much grown up with that your entire life. You've done all of your math with base 10 systems. Okay. So scientific notation wise, that's why we see that. Now, when you have something like 3.22 times 10 raised to the negative four. All that we're doing, and we're trying to create this in standard form. In other words, we just want the number. Like if you just had to give me, what is that number? What does that come out to be? Right now it's in scientific notation. We're trying to just get the normal number. Well, because we have that negative decimal place, according to our chart, we are gonna be moving that decimal place negative exponent, we're going to be moving it to the left. So we know we're going to be taking this number right here, 
times 10 raised to the negative four. And we're gonna move this thing left four places. That's what that number tells you. So imagine taking your decimal place, which is located right here, and we're gonna move that thing. One, two, three, four. And then we put our decimal place. And now anywhere you see those like little bumps, we're gonna dump in a little zero. And then just for good measure, a zero out in front of the decimal place. So this scientific notation form that was straight up given from the beginning boils down to be 0 0.000322. That is the standard form number. Okay. Next up for B, we have 7.9 times 10 raised to the fifth. So 7.9 times 10 raised to the fifth. All right. Well, that's the same thing as taking your decimal place. Notice how it's at positive this time, right? That's a positive five right there. Well, according to our definition, if you have a positive, then we're gonna be moving it to the right. You're just moving your decimal to the right direction. So as a result, you're going this way, total of five places. So we're gonna take our decimal and go one, two, three, four, five. Put your decimal And then anywhere you see those little bumps, just like normal, you throw in those zeros. So it looks like this number comes out to be seven, nine, zero, 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 zero. Again, commas usually help at this point, help distinguish what it is. So 790,000, all right? And that would be our solution there. Now, between A and B, that's really mostly it, guys. You're just moving decimal places for today. Go ahead, pause the video. Feel free to ask if you guys have any questions at all. All right, let's see some more of these in action. If you have the temperature of the sun's core, apparently it is 1.55 times 10 raised to the sixth power. And the goal here is to try and convert that into standard form. In other words, what's just the normal number here? Well, if I have 1.55, and usually for these, I kind of like to move my times 10 to the whatever power a little over, so it gives me some space if I need it. So it looks like we have times 10 to the six, so that's a positive, which means I'm going to the right. Okay. So I'm gonna take my decimal place, Move it one, two, three, four, five, six places, because that's my number up here. And then we just dump in our zeros. Boom, 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 boom. So it looks like our value comes out to be one, five, five, zero, 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 zero. And then we throw in those commas where they belong. So one right there and one right there. And that would be our solution. Okay. Now, if you're ever confuzzled and you're like, well, I'm not really sure which way to move the decimal when you're trying to convert to standard, imagine a number line, right? Here's zero. Well, on a number line, aren't all the positive things over here and all the negative things over there? So that you, you can use that little trick to know, hey, which way do I have to move that decimal? Okay. 
All right. The lowest temperature recorded in a lab. This is actually pretty interesting. In other words, they're, they're saying basically how cool can something get? Like how much can you freeze an item? So notice how it just says two times 10 to the negative 11th like that. Well, the question becomes, where is our decimal place? Where would that actually be at? Fantastic job to those individuals. Yeah, for our decimal place, it is after the two. And then you can put a little zero afterwards if you want. Um, the reason for that is if we gave you like the number, well, we'll do like seven. Seven is the exact same thing as saying 7.0, right? So very much the same situation here. Anytime you're given just a number right there, just know that it's whatever that number is and then 0. 0.0. All right. So we have 2.0 times 10 to the negative 11th power. Now, because it says to the negative 11th, we know that we're going to be moving that thing in the left direction 11 spaces. So we're going to take our decimal and go 11 in this direction. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. We put our little decimal place there. And then anywhere we see those little bumps, we have zeros. So there, 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 there. All of these places. And so finally, it looks like 0. 0.00000. Hang on. Zero, 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 two. That would be your actual standard number. And this would be Kelvin. So really tiny number. Okay. This is a great example though, where you can see it's like, wow, just trying to comprehend what that decimal is like in real context is very challenging for our brains to wrap our head around. Like we don't really quite understand what that means almost. And so that's why scientific notation is super helpful. All right, next up, 4.5 times 10 to the negative three. Well, we have a negative exponent, so we're moving that way three times. So 4.5 times 10 to the negative three. Again, moving our decimal one, two, three times. Anywhere that there's a little bump, we've got a zero. And then one in front for good measure. So 0 0.0045, okay. That would be our solution there. Now, what happens when you have something times 10 to the first? Hmm. So we have 3.69 times 10 raised to the first power. Well, that number one is still a positive one, right? So you're still going to move to the right one unit. So one decimal place. So nothing really changes there, okay? You're still moving your decimal place over one. And what we're left with is 36.9. That would be your final answer there. Okay, a little bit of a special guy, but not crazily different. All right, what I would love for you guys to do is to go ahead, please try G through J. Go ahead, pause the video, try them out. And then we'll come back together and see how we did. All right, fantastic job to those students. So we have 4.59 times 10 to the 
times 10 raised to the seventh power. We're going to move our decimal over to the right seven places because we have a positive seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Put our decimal at the end. Anywhere we see those bumps, fill them in with zeros. Final answer comes out to be. And then our comma. So it looks like 45 million, 900,000. For H, and we have 2.14 times 10 raised to the negative third. Because we have that negative exponent, we are going to the left three places. So one, two, three, put our decimal place, fill in with zeros. And so our final answer comes out to be 0 0.00214. For I, we have times 10 to the negative 5. So we know we're moving to the left, 5 units. So we have 5.01 times 10 to the negative 5. We're going to take our decimal place, move it to the left, five. So that's one, two, three, four, five. And then anywhere we see those bumps, throw in the zeros. And then a zero out, one in front of the decimal, like that. We have 0 0.0000501. Yes, you do need that zero one at the end, OK? And so that would be our final solution there. And now for J, eight is really the same as 8.0 times 10 to the eighth. Because that is a positive eight, we are moving to the right eight decimal places. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we put those zeros in for the little bumps. And so when we do that, we have eight, zero, 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 zero. Commas where they belong though. Boom. And boom. For a grand total of 800 million as a standard number. Fantastic job to those students. Are there any questions at all on any of those four, go ahead, feel free to pause the video and ask. All right, on the you try it is 12 times 10 to the fourth written in scientific notation. Go ahead, please pause the video, try one and two, and then we'll come back together and see what we got. All right, so for number one, we have, it is 12 times 10 to the fourth in between, or I'm sorry, is that written in scientific notation? Fantastic job to that individual. Got no, it's not because our number here is not between one and 10. Has to be between one and 10. So no, because our value 12 is not between one and 10. Okay. Now writing these in standard form. Remember standard form is just a normal number. Okay. So if we have six times 10 to the seventh power, that is really the same thing as saying 6.0 times 10 to the seventh power. And what we're gonna do is we notice that we have a positive seven, so we're gonna move it over to the right seven places. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're moving our decimal seven places to the right. And then we just dump in a zero anywhere where we see those bumps. And so when we are done, we end up with six, zero, 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 and zero, zero. 
for a grand total of 60 million. Okay. Now on the practice, I would ask that you guys do those two different steps. One for the bumps like that. And then one is like kind of a nice clean number with all the commas and everything. Okay. So that's what I'm looking for. Next up, 9.9 .9 times 10 raised to the negative five. So we have 9.9 .9 times 10 to the negative fifth. Well, looks like because we have a negative exponent there, we're gonna shift this to the left five units. So we would take our decimal place and move it one, two, three, four, five decimal places. Anywhere where we see those little bumps, we throw in a zero. And then that zero extra one in front. So final answer is 0 0.0000099. And then for number four, 1.28, five times 10 to the fourth power. We do see that we have a positive four here. So we are going to the right four places. Taking our decimal, moving it over four, one, two, three, four. And then throw a little zero there. Anywhere over those, those extra bumps. So our final answer is one, two, eight, five, zero with a comma right there. Okay, again, two lines for each question like that, okay? Just make sure you're doing both. One for the bumps, one for the final answer with commas. Are there any questions at all on one or two? Go ahead, feel free to pause the video if you need to and ask. All right, here we are at example two. Um, and on this one, we're gonna be looking at densities of objects. So it says an object with a lesser density than water will float. An object with a greater density in the water will sink. And so we're asked to use each given density in kilograms per cubic meter to explain what happens when you place a brick and an apple in water. Many of us recall when we were younger, bobbing for apples, right? Notice how they floated to the top usually. But if you put a brick in water, we know that it would sink down. Using scientific notation though, we can actually calculate those densities as a standard number, okay? So for water, when we see 1.0 times 10 to the third, we have 1.0 times 10 to the third because we have a value that is positive here. We're gonna be going over to the right. We're gonna move our decimal over to the right. One, two, three. And then anywhere we see those little bumps, we're gonna throw in the zero. So the density for water in standard form would be 1,000, okay? Next for the brick, we have 1.84 times 10 to the third. Very, very similar scenario. We're gonna move that decimal over three times. So one, two, three. And then anywhere there is that zero or anywhere we see that bump, we put a zero. So we're looking at a density of 1,840. And finally, for the apple, we see that it is 6.41 times 10 to the second. Now, because that is a positive two, we know that we're gonna go to the right two. So we're gonna move our decimal over two, giving us 641. Now, each of them are in standard form. And so what we're gonna do next is compare the densities. So notice how the brick value 
in standard form is larger than the water density, that's where we see it sink. Okay. Whereas the apple one is smaller, so that's why it floats. Any questions at all on example two? All right, what I would love for you guys to do next is to go ahead, pause the video, and let's go for you trying this one, this one, and we'll stop at those two for right now. So go ahead, try those first two. If you're feeling really ambitious or you're thinking this is light work, you can go ahead and try this one too. So go ahead, pause the video, try them out, and then we'll come back together and see how we did. All right, so for example two, what we have is the density of lead is 1.14 times 10 to the fourth kilograms per cubic meter. So what we wanna do is calculate what is the standard form for that value. So we have 1.14 times 10 raised to the fourth power, because that four is a positive four, we're gonna to move to the right, that decimal. So we have one, two, three, four, and then anywhere that there's those little bumps, we throw in the zeros. And so writing out the standard form value, we end up with 11,400. Now, what does that actually mean? Well, we can use our two standard form values, one from the water, and one from the uh, lead that's placed inside the water. So this value right here. And then compare the two. Well, notice how the lead one is actually bigger, right? 11,400 is a much bigger number than 1,000. As a result, what would happen there is you would see it sink to the bottom because it's heavier, okay? So our lead, to answer the question, our lead, when placed in water would sink to the bottom. Okay. For our second one, we're asked to estimate the population of the United States is three times 10 to the eighth power and the population of the world is seven times 10 raised to the ninth power. How many times larger is the population of the world? So in the United States, what we're gonna go ahead and do is transition this value into a standard form. Right now it's in scientific. So we have 3.0, this is for US, times 10 raised to the eighth power. Let's go ahead and calculate what is that standard form? Well, because we have times 10 to the eighth, that is a positive eight. So we're gonna move the decimal over to the right. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then anywhere where we see those little bumps, we throw in zeros. So for the US, we have, should be about 300 million. So looks like two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we need one more, eight. All right. So we are looking then at 300 million. I know that's much larger at this point, but um, for this question, it is 300 million. Now we have to figure out the world's population. Well, according to this, the world's population is seven times 10 raised to the ninth power. So seven times 10 raised to the ninth. It's really the same as 7.0 times 10 to the ninth. And we're gonna move that decimal over to the right four place or nine places because we have a positive nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then anywhere where we see those bumps, we throw in the zeros. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Maybe our ninth. So it looks like
There's our value. And then our commas. So we are looking at 7 billion people roughly on the earth. Now the question becomes, how much uh, larger or how many times larger is the world population? Well, how would you find, if you have the US's population compared with the world population, how would you find out how many more times the world's population is? larger. Awesome job to that individual. It was suggested just take the world population, 7 billion. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, that's, or zeros. And divide it by the U.S.'s population, so 300 million. And then what you can do very, very nicely and easily, especially with standard form, is start to cross off zeros. Make your life easy. So looks like it boils down to be 70 over three. Um, so that's about what 23 times and a third, roughly. So 23 and one third times bigger. So compared to the world, the US has some population, but there's a lot more out there. Okay. That's kind of crazy to think about. There's really that many more people out there in the world compared to the US, because the US is a pretty big place. So I know like in India, I think that they have like a solid billion people or something like that. And I think China also has like at close to one or two billion, somewhere around there. So there's a lot of like more dense areas too, populations. All right, next up we're looking at a year is about 3.156 times 10 to the seventh seconds, all right? So the question becomes, well, how many seconds are in five years? Well, what we can go ahead and do is find out what is this standard value? So we have 3.156 times 10 to the seventh power. And because that is a positive seven, we're going to move our decimal to the right seven spots. So we would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Throwing those zeros in, or we see those bumps. Ending up with three, one, five, six, zero, 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 zero. And then putting those commas in. Now, that is for one year. That's how many seconds you have. Well, if you wanted to find it for five, all you'd have to do is do what? Very good to that individual. We're going to take that value, multiply it by five, and see what we get. So go ahead, pause the video, type that in the calculator, or multiply it out. What do we end up with? Awesome job to that individual. So you should have gotten this value right here. Okay. Now for B, it says how many seconds are in a half of a year? A half of a year. So how would you actually calculate that now? Awesome job to those individuals. They suggested pretty much taking how much it is in one year. And the first suggestion was multiply it by 0 0.5. And then the other path was taking our value and dividing by two. These mean the same exact thing. You will get the same result in the end. So what is our 31,560,000 times 0.5? What would we get there? 
So that is the value that we ended up with, 15,780,000. Now again, for the blue, if you did this path instead, you would see the exact same conclusion. So really specifically, we should say seconds. Okay. So same exact result. Now, likewise in this one, there would be that many seconds. All right. Now, when it comes to time, guys, you're going to realize if you haven't already that time starts to fly by, especially as you get older. So yes, that seems like a lot of seconds and I would encourage you to uh, seize every single moment in life. All right. Trust me when I say it will fly faster than you realize. So take advantage, seize the day, enjoy it, work hard, go forth, do great things.